Roush Games! Hello, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Yet again, we'll have some WWE programming coming from downtown Chicago. This is the arena where the Chicago Blackhawks do their work in dominating the NHL over many of the past few years here in the early 20-teens. We're going to lead off our five-match card with a huge match. Dusty Rhodes making his singles competition debut in this year's Universe Mode against Darren Young, who has been not very lucky in the ring. But there's a nice float over DDT from him. The four other matches we'll have this evening, we will have a tag team match coming up next. The NWO versus D-Generation X. That is correct. You heard me right. We'll then follow up with an appearance from our world heavyweight champion, Andre the Giant taking on Stone Cold Steve Austin in a one-fall non-title match. Our fourth match of the evening. We're going to have the Divas champion AJ Lee taking on Natalia in a non-title submission match. It looks like Natalia's rant against uh, Vince McMahon on Superstars brought her plight to his attention. And she has indeed been booked in a match against the champion. Though it is non-title, this may lead to something at Over the Limit later this month. And then in our main event tonight, we're going to have two legends clashing in the ring. Oh, big vertical suplex there. <laughs> we are going to have Ricky Steamboat taking on Razor Ramon in a Falls Count Anywhere match to send us off the air here, ladies and gentlemen. It will be huge. There's Darren Young reversing into a reverse DDT. Nice maneuver there. We've only seen Dusty in action once in our universe mode so far. We didn't even see it on TV. It was a non-televised match on Superstars two days ago. Or my apologies, that was last night. I'm sorry, I get my days mixed up. But he, he won a tag team match with his son, Cody Rhodes, on Superstars, defeating Andre the Giant and King Kong Bundy, surprisingly. Darren Young, we've seen quite a bit of, especially recently in the universe mode here, mainly on Superstars, but when we do see him, he tends to lose, as he did on Superstars this, this past week. He lost at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view against Kurt Hennig in a one-on-one -on -one match. He has not been on the positive side of many fights, and he's looking for a way to stop that. He's looking pretty good in this match against Dusty. There's another big reversal, a punch to the chest, but Dusty gets him into a side headlock. Throws the arm over, and one more big-time vertical suplex. Dusty for the pin. One. Oh, just that one count, though. And Darren Young does kick out. But Dusty with a huge series of offensive punching maneuvers. And Darren Young throws him out of the side headlock there. Darren now stalking, stomped to the back. Lifts Dusty up, but Dusty into a jawbreaker. And now he's got him from the side one more time. And he gouges the eyes of Darren Young. Now Dusty working from behind. Lifts the leg up, and atomic drop indeed, all down on the right leg of Darren Young. Knocks him down with a big discus punch, but Darren Young is up with a punch to the chest and a kick to the gut. Now working the arm of Dusty, drop kick there, sends him down to the mat. Darren now, big time leg drop right across the chest and throat of Dusty Rhodes. Dusty looks groggy in the ring. Darren, nice bridging back suplex into a pin. But Dusty does indeed kick out. And now Dusty twists the arm around. And a big bionic elbow right to the top of the head. And now Dusty is fired up in the ring. He's got Darren Young where he wants him. Darren dances to his feet. And another elbow. And another elbow. And another elbow. <laughs> it's the first time I've gotten to use Dusty's finisher in this universe mode. And he just kills Darren Young with it. Two. Through almost a three count, but Darren Young does manage to kick out there. Dusty still in control with the arm. There's a punch to the back of the head, and now running it, Darren Young. Big time running DDT from Dusty Rhodes to Darren Young. One more pin. One, two. Oh, and another kick out near fall there, but Darren Young is still in this match. There's a knee to the chest, and he misses a knee to the gut, and that gives Dusty another opportunity, and there is a big time body slam. From the legend, the American dream, Dusty Rhodes. 
I've said before that I think Daniel Bryan has the current best entrance music in the WWE. Dusty Rhodes, in this announcer's opinion, has the best of all time. I dare you to argue that. We're back outside of the ring, and a big back suplex from Darren Young to Dusty Rhodes there. And Dusty is yet again groggy, and he's now thrown back into the ring by Darren Young. And a big elbow to the face as Young climbs up after him. And a leg drop on the apron, guillotine style. But Dusty is once again going to roll out of the ring. And he runs it down. But Darren Young into a huge power slam. Using the big man's momentum. But Dusty is up on his feet pushing off. There's a knee to the chest. And another with a knees lift. And now from behind is Dusty Rhodes. And that's a big time back suplex. Darren's head hits the apron on the way down. And Dusty's back up in the ring. And the crowd is loving his return to ring action. And now back in the ring they both are. Dusty with another knee lift. And he twists the arm of Darren Young around. And one more adding to the leverage and slams into the shoulder. And one more running DDT from Dusty Rhodes to Darren Young. Now Dusty picks Darren Young up. And another big time elbow to the top of the head sends Darren Young flying. And now Dusty is strutting around the ring. The crowd knows what's coming up here. He runs at him. Huge elbow drop from the American Dream into the chest of Darren Young. This has got to be it. One, two, Three, Dusty Rhodes wins, and Darren Young loses yet again in singles competition. He cannot seem to get it together here, ladies and gentlemen. Dusty Rhodes, two wins in two matches this week. A tag with his son and his first singles match in this universe mode. Looks like Dusty's going on for some pretty good things here, if the ranking system has anything to say about it. While Darren Young falls farther and farther down the card, We've got to hope that he finds it in himself to come back. He's not exactly hated by the, U the WWE Universe here. They do tend to like him and his partner, Titus O'Neil. But he has been on the bad end of a lot of matches recently. And if he doesn't want to end up shipped down to NXT, much like Kofi Kingston or Antonio Cesaro were a week ago, he's going to have to get his act together. But in the meantime, Dusty Rhodes wins. We're coming right back with an awesome old-school tag team match. NWO DX. Don't go away, guys. And we are back, ladies and gentlemen, the Madhouse on Madison, the United Center in Chicago. Just under 21,000 fans here for Friday Night SmackDown this first Friday in May, 2K14. First Friday night event since the Extreme Rules pay-per-view last Sunday, where Andre the Giant did indeed win the World Heavyweight Championship, the big belt here on SmackDown. We haven't seen much since then, aside from superstars. And that's why we're excited to be here tonight. And this is going to be an incredibly exciting tag team match, our second match of the evening. We've got DX in its current modern-day incarnation, Triple H and Shawn Michaels still kicking it together here in the WWE Universe. And they are taking on two of the three members of the NWO, Six and Kurt Hennig, Mr. Perfect, in a great matchup for the ages here. Just second on the card Three more to go after this. You've got Michaels and Six in the ring to start things off. Michaels just hitting back suplex after back suplex here. Triple H on the outside. Kurt Hennig in the other corner. And a bunch of fans loving this match. Oh, and Six gets out of the way. And he's going to tag in Hennig. And Michaels is just ready for it on the other side of the ring. But Hennig sneaks in with punches. Michaels with a big time block. Punch right to the face of Kurt Hennig. Now twisting the arm around into a pump handle. Lift over the knee for a rib breaker. And now Michaels going at Hennig, but Hennig, big time inverted atomic drop, knee to the junk of Shawn Michaels, the heartbreak kid. Now Hennig lifts him up, and working from behind is Mr. Perfect on Shawn Michaels into a Russian leg sweep. And now Michaels might want to think about getting out of the ring to make a tag here, but not before a big time float over neck breaker sends Kurt Hennig down, and now Michaels running over to his corner. But instead of tagging, he goes up top and off the turnbuckle. Misses a double axe handle right into a side backbreaker from Kurt Hennig. Great maneuver from Kurt Hennig there. Amazing awareness to, to put the double axe handle into that. But Michaels again with a float over twisting neck breaker. And this time he's going to head over again. And now he tags in Triple H, Hunter, Hurst, Helmsley. In another world, he might be the COO. But in this world, he is still an active wrestler and still carrying the green torch of Degeneration X. And Hennig now twists the arm around. And a big step up in Zaguri from Kurt Hennig to Triple H. 
but Triple H blocks a punch and reacts with his own big one, twisting the arm around of Hennig now, and sends him to the mat with an arm bar, twisting back on it. Does not hold it in for the submission, though. Just wants to cause a little pain there. Triple H, the ultimate in-ring general here in WWE history. He will tear you apart limb by limb if you give him enough time. But Hennig with a drop kick there is going to make sure that does not happen, ladies and gentlemen. Fans here in Chicago are loving this match. They will love each of the next three as well. Next tonight, we are going to have our World Heavyweight Champion, Andre the Giant, Come out for a one-fall match against Stone Cold Steve Austin. Non-title, but great. It'll be his first matchup as champion to be televised, considering his tag team match in which he and King Kong Bundy lost to the Rhodes family on Superstars earlier this week was not televised. Lucky for them. Uh, we remember on Superstars the Ted DiBiase had mentioned that the Million Dollar Corporation will be attempting to literally own WWE. We do not know yet if we will be taking him at his word. Vince McMahon has made no mention of it at all in any of his press conferences. Nice swipe from Triple H there. But we're interested to keep our eye on that. We're, we're going to see if anything comes up with that as Andre the Giant makes his way to the ring against Stone Cold next. We'll also have... The Divas champion, AJ Lee, taking on her number one contender, her twice proven number one contender, Natalia. That's in a one fall non title match later on this evening. And we're going to finish things off with Ricky Steamboat taking on Razor Ramon in a Falls Count Anywhere match. That'll be our main event tonight, ladies and gentlemen. And now running across the ring is Triple H. Six is going to come back in now. Big time flying arm drag from Six. Nice running maneuver there. Slamming the head of Triple H down now. Six, formerly known as X-Pac here in the WWE. Formerly one of the foremost members of D-Generation X. Taking on two of his best friends here from the click, from DX. All the old days of wrestling behind him. He's now part of NWO again as they have quote-unquote invaded the WWE. But not to much fanfare. The NWO has not done much of anything since they got here. Scott Steiner won a triple threat match their first night here on SmackDown. Kurt Hennig won a tag, a single fall match, sorry about that, against Darren Young at the Extreme Rules pay-per-view. And then on Superstars, Six and Scott Steiner fought each other just because there was no one else on the card. We thought when they first got here that they would be making a big statement going after the tag team title still held by the Shield despite the Million Dollar Corporation's status as number one contender there. But the NWO has not done anything toward that. Uh, we were hoping to see that this match would get them on the road to those tag team titles. But it looks like DX has taken control again. DX, of course, two more men. We haven't seen much of at all. I believe that this is Triple H's first televised match in this universe mode. We did see Shawn Michaels get a win on Superstars a few weeks ago last month in April. But it wasn't, you know, to much consequence at all. And now Hennig is down in the center of the ring. Michaels going up. And he completely misses a drop kick. Times it very poorly. Hennig out of the way. Hennig is now going to tag in his partner, Six. And now it's Six and Shawn Michaels in the ring. And Michaels twists the arm around. And a big step up Enziguri from Six. Hitting Michaels in the back of the head. And a nice elbow drop to the small of the back while Michaels is down. And Six is in control here. The NWO is on a roll. Six whipping Michaels into the turnbuckle. And now he tags in Hennig. And we're going to see a double team here. Six sends Michaels off the ropes. Drop toe hold into an elbow to the back. And now the NWO is decidedly in control here. Hennig and Michaels in the ring. But Michaels with a kick to the gut. And he follows it up with a sweet chin music. And Hennig is down. And now Michaels trying to go for the pin near the ropes. And it is a rope break. He couldn't get him away. And Triple H is attacking six outside of the ring now. But now Hennig with a drop toe hold. Sending Michaels down face first into the mat. And now Hennig wants Michaels to get up. Michaels is groggy. But Michaels with a back elbow to Kurt Hennig. And a big time inverted atomic drop from Kurt Hennig to Shawn Michaels. And then Hennig escapes running across. Tagging in six. And now Michaels is up, and he throws Six over into the corner. Oh, and Six reverses. And wait, Shawn Michaels with a sweet chin music to Six now. And Michaels goes for the pin. The ref is down. One, two, three. Oh, 
Six does indeed kick out without needing Kurt Hennig to get there. Triple H couldn't get across the ring to stop him from coming in. But now DX completely on a roll. Shawn Michaels with two sweet chin musics back to back to six and Kurt Hennig there, ladies and gentlemen. There's a snapmare and an elbow to the back of the head. Triple H is still in the ring fighting Kurt Hennig on the other side. And now Michaels has a figure four locked in and six looks like he wants to tap out. But Michaels lets him go, just holding it in enough to cause pain there. Tries to pick him up and now six reverses out. But now Michaels front headlock. Six reverses, twisting the arm. Elbow to the small of the back. They are working on the back of Shawn Michaels here. They know it is a weakness of his. And Six with a huge jump up Frankensteiner. And now working from behind is Six. Elbows to the neck. Slamming the head of Shawn Michaels down. But Michaels kips up. Six though with an elbow to the back of the head. And Michaels blocks a chop. And a flying cross body for Michaels. Oh, but Six reverses into a DDT there. Nice high angle DDT at that. And Michaels trying to get his energy back. And <laughs> they collide in midair. And now Michaels, with Triple H's help, gets a free shot at six there. Looks like Michaels was trying to forge a comeback in this match. Nice inverted atomic drop from Shawn Michaels. Now working from behind on six. And he blocks the chop, taking out the leg of six from behind. And an elbow drop to the chest. And now Michaels wheezing over to the corner. Got to get fresh legs in here. And there's Triple H. Gets his eyes raked by six, and now he's groggy. And a huge power bomb from Triple H. And now Triple H is the one that's fired up, and he picks six up. Oh, and six with a knee to the gut on Triple H, his former running buddy. But Triple H now with a back elbow. And another knee to the gut from six. The computer totally does not want to let me run a comeback at all here, ladies and gentlemen. Cheaty, cheaty maneuvers there, computer. Triple H is down after a flip over back suplex from six. And now Kurt Hennig is once again the legal man in this match. Triple H looks hurt. Hennig is lifting him up to his feet. And now working from behind is Mr. Perfect. Big drop kick to the back. But Triple H running DDT plants Kurt Hennig down. And Triple H is fired up here stomping on the chest of Hennig. And a big knee to the top of the head. And now Triple H lifts Hennig up. Punch to the face followed by another Followed by a third, a much bigger one, sending Hennig down. But now Hennig reverses out with a punch to the gut. And a big-time inverted atomic drop. We have had so many knees hitting so many crotches in this match, ladies and gentlemen. Triple H now with the advantage again, working from a front headlock. But Hennig reverses into a Russian leg sweep, and Triple H is down. And Hennig rolling over the hot tag on six. And he gets the punch to Triple H. And he knocks Shawn Michaels off the apron. And now it's six alone in the ring with Triple H. And Triple H works the arm around. And a big time body slam from Triple H. And he tells six what he can do with that. Working from behind Triple H. Big time back suplex. And he's all kinds of fired up here ladies and gentlemen. And now six running over to tag in Kurt Hennig. And Triple H twists the arm around. And he's got Hennig up with an arm twisted behind him on the body slam there. And running at Hennig. One more running. DDT plants him down. And now to the ropes. Clothesline six off the ropes. Triple H going for the pin on Hennig. One, two. Oh, almost a three count again. That's the third near fall. DX almost winning this match three times. Either member of the NWO kicking out each of them. And wait, six pulls HBK off the apron. And now it's Triple H alone. Perfect plex from Kurt Hennig in the ring. The pin. One, two. Oh, Triple H kicks out on that two count. Shawn Michaels almost in to help out. But Triple H gets out on his own. Twisting the arm around now is Triple H into another big time body slam. And now Triple H runs across the ring. And he's going to tag in Shawn Michaels one more time here, ladies and gentlemen. Michaels going for Hennig. But Hennig with a poke to the eye. And Michaels staggering off in the corner. Now Hennig from behind. He's got the sleeper locked in here. But Triple H is in the ring to break that up. Michaels not quite ready to lose this match yet. Michaels twisting the arm around there. And there's an elbow to the back. And now Shawn Michaels with the hot tag to Triple H. H in the ring. Lays out Kurt Hennig with a big punch to the jaw. Heading over for six. Knocks him off the apron. And now it's just Kurt Hennig and Triple H in the ring. And Triple H was trying to use his signature. But it wasn't popping up for whatever reason. 
Unbelievable. And now the cross arm breaker applied by Hennig, but Triple H gets out with the help of his running buddy, Shawn Michaels. Kurt Hennig sweeps him from behind, and now with the pin is Hennig. One. Oh, just a one count, though, and Triple H does manage to kick out. Hennig with punches, and now he's going to send Triple H into the ropes. Nope, on the rebound, knee to the gut, sending him down, and he slams the arm into the mat. Still can't figure out why that was not a signature eligible maneuver there when Kurt Hennig was standing up, but whatever. Sometimes WWE 2K14 needs to cheat on Legend Difficulty. Because apparently I'm just too nasty. And now Kurt Hennig and Triple H both up. And there's a big drop kick from Hennig to Triple H. And the leverage pin from Kurt Hennig here. One. Oh, but Triple H does indeed kick out. And he kicks Hennig to the gut. And he's got him set up. We're going to have the pedigree here. Except Kurt Hennig reverses because of course he does. Because this is legend difficulty. And I can't buy a win in this particular match. If the computer decides that it needs to win here. And now we're going to see one more perfect plex. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen. The pin is applied. One, two. Oh, but it turns into a rope break because Shawn Michaels pushes Kurt Hennig into the ropes. The computer lets me come back here. And this match continues to go on. There's another running DDT from Triple H to Kurt Hennig. Michaels is laid out. Hennig is laid out. Triple H for the pin. One, two. Oh, but six breaks it up. It looks like that may have actually been the three count this match needed to finally come to an end. And Triple H with another big body slam to Kurt Hennig. And Triple H needs to put this match away. There's a flying knee drop to Hennig one more time. Hennig pushing off. Triple H though working from behind. Hennig reversing into a big time belly to belly side slam. And the NWO and DX are putting on a great fight here. Despite the announcer whining about the computer not wanting him to win. There is Hennig from behind flipping over Triple H. Snapping him into the mat. And now Six is going to come in. Hennig's in the corner. Yes, we've got a double tag. Six and Shawn Michaels, the legal men. And Shawn Michaels, big time, float over, neck breaker. Sending six down to the mat. And Michaels celebrating for the crowd here, ladies and gentlemen. Sizing it up, big time elbow drop. Right into the chest of six. Six pack, X-Pac, whatever you'd like to call him. And now Michaels working from a front headlock. But six reversing into a drop toe hold. And now off the ropes goes six. But instead, he's going to tag in Kurt Hennig again. And Kurt Hennig, one more perfect flex for the road. He's got the leg locked. One, two. Oh, Shawn Michaels kicks out on the two count now. And now Michaels twists him around. Swinging neck breaker there. And Michaels is tuning up the band, ladies and gentlemen. Kurt Hennig is up. He's groggy. Michaels is ready. Pushes off. One more super kick for the road. And now Hennig is down. Michaels for the pin. Triple H get in the ring. One, two. Oh, no. Six got in the ring faster than Triple H could. And now Triple H angry just breaks up his own partner's hold. DX is breaking down here. NWO is working it right. Six is tagged back into the ring. And now Michaels runs it both. But he misses a forearm to Hennig on the apron. And now working from behind on six. There's a big belly-to-back suplex sending Six down to the mat. And now Michael stomps on him at an elbow to the small of the back. And running at Kurt Hennig. Throws him off the apron. Rolls Six over for a pin. We've got one, two. Oh, two count. And Six does indeed kick out. And now Hennig and Six both in the ring. Michael's trying to work from behind, but in the confusion gets reversed by Six. Going for a front headlock now is Michaels. Got his arm over. Has him up, big time stalling vertical suplex from the heartbreak kid, the legend, Shawn Michaels, 2-6. And there's a stomp to the face. And now Michaels heading back over into his corner. Going to tag in his partner, Triple H, running at 6. Big time running DDT. Kurt Hennig is bleeding on the outside here, ladies and gentlemen, after that last super kick. 6 up with a reverse. And now he's going to tag in his bloodied partner as Triple H gets one more running DDT onto Kurt Hennig. And now, standing over him, he picks him up. And he throws Hennig off the ropes. And there's a big-time spine buster from Triple H. And he is all fired up, ladies and gentlemen. The crowd knows it. This is going to be one more pedigree. Unless NWO can do something here. He's got the arms locked. And Triple H down on top of Kurt Hennig with the pedigree. Here's the pin. One. Two, six breaks it up despite Shawn Michaels killing him on the outside of the ring there. 
Another two count, another near fall, and again this match continues on, ladies and gentlemen. We did not see this coming when we booked this second on the card. May as well have been a main event. Pinfall one, two, three! Shawn Michaels just standing on the outside, watches Triple H succumb to a pinfall from Kurt Hennig. The NWO beats DX. The NWO has made a huge statement here. There's that double team from much earlier in the match, ladies and gentlemen. I cannot believe how far this match went, how many near falls there were, and it just looked like DX, the communication broke down by the end. We saw Triple H breaking up a snapmare from Shawn Michaels earlier on, and then we saw Shawn Michaels just watching Triple H from the outside on the ring apron. I don't know what this means about them. This is their first time fighting together in a long time, in this universe mode especially. But either way, NWO gets the better of them because of these communication errors, and NWO gets the victory here on SmackDown from the United Center, the UC in Chicago, Illinois. We've still got three more matches coming up unbelievably. We will be right back. They're attending to Triple H in the ring. Kurt Hennig at six, leaving victorious. And welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Our third match here from Chicago tonight, this first Friday in May, 2K14. First time seeing the SmackDown roster en masse since the Extreme Rules pay-per-view this past Sunday night, where Andre the Giant did indeed defeat Alberto Del Rio in an Extreme Rules match to win the World Heavyweight Championship and bring the gold home for Ted DiBiase and the rest of the Million Dollar Corporation. And now this is the first time we will see Andre the Giant in ring action as the World Heavyweight Champion. Unless, of course, that is you were in the live studio audience for Superstars, our house show earlier this week, where you watched Andre and his partner King Kong Bundy lose in tag team action to Dusty Rhodes and Cody Rhodes. Dusty victorious earlier this evening against Darren Young in a one-fall match. On Superstars, though, aside from that tag team match, we heard a little bit about the plans of the Million Dollar Corporation. Big back body drop from Andre the Giant there. The Million Dollar Corporation moving forward. And Ted DiBiase expressed what we all fear. They pretty much own the SmackDown roster at this point. DiBiase beat Goldberg at Extreme Rules after he couldn't find ways to beat him all month long before the pay-per-view. And now Andre biting the head of Stone Cold and throwing him to the mat. Andre just looking unbeatable so far in this universe mode as the World Heavyweight Champion. But DiBiase and crew are already in control of this blue brand. And I wouldn't be surprised if this month was just going to be a victory parade for Andre the Giant taking down all comers here on SmackDown. But even aside from SmackDown... Oh, big back suplex from Stone Cold there. DiBiase on Superstars hinted that he may be interested in purchasing the WWE. His exact words were that they figuratively own SmackDown after winning both of their matches at Extreme Rules and taking over the top belt in the company while remaining in a number one contender spot for the World Tag Team Championship held by Roman Reigns and Seth Rollins of The Shield. But he said they wish to literally own all of WWE and that Vince would sell given the correct offer because as he reminded us, everyone has a price, ladies and gentlemen. We don't know at this time if that means that there are talks to sell the WWE. We do know that Ted DiBiase does not mess around when it comes to speaking in terms of money. And we do know that Vince McMahon has made bad, de bad decisions in the past. <laughs> He has not yet said anything about selling the WWE, but what we can surmise from all of this is that if Ted DiBiase were to become the owner of this federation, my God, I may be out of a job. <laughs> we all may be out of a job except his wrestlers and whoever his wrestlers can beat. So for the sake of all people competing in and around this ring and, and using it as a source of their income, we have to hope that that does not happen, that that worst case scenario does not happen. And anybody that can beat people within the Million Dollar Corporation only slows the purchase if it were to happen. Goldberg had DiBiase's number all last month, but DiBiase wore him down heading into Extreme Rules and using Randy Orton and then using himself as a weapon, beating him in the Extreme Rules match eventually. Andre the Giant, just unbeatable, taking on Alberto Del Rio every Friday night last month. Del Rio had no answer for it. Del Rio lost his title and then lost his job being demoted to NXT as a result of all of it. There's a pin one, 
two. Oh, Stone Cold does kick out. Looks like the match was almost over there. And now Stone Cold twisting the arm of Andre the Giant around. Andre the Giant is just a man on a mission here in the WWE. When you can beat your opponent, take his world championship, one of the most prized belts within this company, and then make sure that he is sent down to NXT as a result. I mean, that's just complete demolition of somebody's character. And wait, Stone Cold somehow went up top. Hits a huge diving elbow drop on Andre the Giant. And Stone Cold with another elbow drop to the chest. And now fired up. He's getting Andre to get up to his feet. Stone Cold is suddenly right back in the middle of this match. Kicks the Giant to the gut. Big time Stone Cold stunner to Andre the Giant. Sends him flying across the ring. The big man rolling backwards. Even a giant can sell that maneuver, ladies and gentlemen. Stone Cold going for the pin. Oh, but Andre does get up. That's not going to keep him down for too long. Stone Cold from a side headlock here. And he's going to get the giant up over his head. Big time vertical suplex. Unbelievable. And Andre the Giant is bleeding, ladies and gentlemen. But the giant punches Stone Cold off of him. Stone Cold, one more headlock from the side. But the giant into a huge back suplex. Stone Cold got about 10 feet in the air off of that. And there's a big time elbow drop to the chest. One, two. Oh, Stone Cold does kick out at two. One of the more resilient characters in the WWE is Stone Cold. And there's a big back suplex of his own to the Giant. And now stepping over him. Series of punches to the face. The face as big as the plate on the World Heavyweight Championship. And Stone Cold still fired up. Still feeling it. Wants to get that stunner one more time. Big reverse atomic drop from Stone Cold. The Giant pushes him off. But Stone Cold, huge back body drop to Andre the Giant there. And now stomping a mud hole in the chest of the 8th wonder of the world. Repeatedly is Stone Cold Steve Austin. But the Giant rakes his eyes, essentially ripping his face from the skull there. Stone Cold is still a little bit fired up from Superstars last night. It was not a televised match, but he did win a match against Diesel to send the show almost off the air, almost at the end of the night. was originally the main event, and wait, Stone Cold has Andre the Giant getting up one more time. Groggy kicks him to the gut, and there's another Stone Cold stunner from the Texas Rattlesnake. And Andre the Giant is just covered in blood, ladies and gentlemen. And now Stone Cold's got to get him away from the ropes. But he's wasting valuable time here. And again, the, on, the, the Giant just no-sells it. The Giant just doesn't stay down. He's caked in blood. One, two, three. Man, this computer has the announcer's number today. Andre the Giant steals a pinfall from Stone Cold after the second stunner of the match. Andre just would not stay down for the pin right up against the ropes. And despite Stone Cold's greatest efforts, the World Heavyweight Champion remains on a crazy roll here on SmackDown. You gotta think he almost lost a match there, bleeding profusely afterward after that second stunner especially, blood getting everywhere on the face of Andre the Giant. But he does indeed beat the Texas Rattlesnake here in Chicago tonight. It was a non-title match, but it's a pride thing. And for another week at the very least, the Million Dollar Corporation rides on, controlling the blue brand with no one there to stop them. We've got two matches left, guys. We'll be right back. And we are back in Chicago, ladies and gentlemen. Huge running clothesline from Natalia to open this match. This is our fourth match of the evening. It is a non-title submission match between the Divas champion AJ Lee and her twice-proven number one contender, Natalia. This is a rivalry that hasn't really had a chance to spill out into the ring. They've had one match so far in this universe mode very early last month. I believe it was actually our first episode of Raw where Natalia beat AJ in a non-title one-fall match that initially threw Natalia up onto the top of the rankings and made her number one contender for most of the month of April. Then in the last week of April, that is last week, on Raw and SmackDown, she found herself in number one contenders matches, first against Caitlyn and then against Caitlyn's bitter rival Lita, beating both of them, proving twice that she was the number one contender to the butterfly belt, the Divas Championship. Yet, despite all the work, despite the proving, despite all of it, Natalia found herself without a match at Extreme Rules as the Divas title went undefended. Natalia was very incensed by that, compounded by the fact that the men's United States Championship was defended by Dean Ambrose against two men who 
never had a single number one contenders match between them, and that could easily have been the Divas Championship match instead. She's very angry, and on Superstars earlier this week, she pled her case with GM, CEO, Chairman Vince McMahon, saying that she deserved a title shot, demanding one. Vince sent her out of the office, telling her she was lucky she still had a job talking to him like that. Another big running clothesline from Natalia to AJ Lee. But Natalia is just possessed, and she has one thing on her mind. That one thing is winning the Divas Championship, and she is very angry that she was not given the opportunity, despite being asked to prove herself so many times last month in the ring, whereas AJ only really had that one match. There's a big jump up Frankensteiner from AJ Lee. And now they're fighting their way up the ramp, and another one sending Natalia down onto the floor of the arena. Remember, this is a submission match. Submissions must occur within the ring. No pinfalls apply, but there are also no countouts. Big time Hurricane Rana from AJ Lee sends Natalia face first into the steel stairs. These divas are not afraid. And there's another one sending Natalia into the barricade. Unbelievable from AJ Lee. You gotta think, she's heard everything that Natalia has said. All last month, over the past week, she's been around for all of it. And while she hasn't been in a match, while she did not defend her Divas Championship, she is here today to show Natalia that she's barking up the wrong tree. It doesn't matter if you're the number one contender. If you're not worthy, you're not worthy. And there's a big time suplex into the stairs. And Natalia's body just twisting and contorting over the steel there. AJ has destroyed her on the outside of the ring here. And now AJ flipping over... That's her signature maneuver, ladies and gentlemen. And now running at Natalia, but Natalia with a knee to the gut. And now AJ with a back elbow to Natalia. Kicks her in the gut. And a big time DDT from AJ Lee. And now Natalia gets up and punches AJ in the face. AJ with another big maneuver again, sending the legs of Natalia crashing down into the steel stairs. Natalia meeting those steel stairs. She may very well be injured. Her knee has impacted twice, three times on the steel stairs now after that body slam from AJ Lee. That is not something to mess around with. But Natalia counters with a huge back body drop to the Divas champ, who looks very much hurt right now. And now Natalia with a vertical suplex has AJ up. And Natalia with the squat. This is her showing off. This is her signature. And sends AJ to the floor of the arena from a very high vantage point. And there's a big leg drop, leg drop from Natalia to AJ. Missing the elbow drop afterwards. And now AJ, one more jump up. Frankenstein reversing the running maneuver from Natalia. These two have been outside the entire match. There's a big kick to the small of the back from AJ. But now Natalia pushes her off. AJ working from behind as we reset. Big time back suplex to the base of the entrance ramp. Natalia's skull bouncing off the floor here. And AJ working from behind one more time. Knee to the back there. Sends Natalia down. And now Natalia's back up. And AJ one more time. Flipping over reverse neck breaker there. And AJ standing over what looks like the corpse of Natalia. Natalia throws her back into the ring. But AJ does indeed get up and out of the way. And now wait. AJ Lee. She has the Black Widow locked in in this submission match. This could be what she needs to put it away. Oh, but Natalia does indeed break her hold. And AJ's got to keep going. She's going to show off for the crowd here. Then twist the arm of Natalia around. But Natalia reversing out. Big time arm drag. Nice wrestling maneuver there. AJ again going after the arm. And there's her own arm drag. A bit faster. A bit more snap to it. AJ now stomping down on the face of Natalia. And running at her. Big time Hurricane Rana sends her to the ropes. Back in the ring finally. That match was getting out of hand on the outside. There's an elbow to the small of the back. But Natalia pushes AJ off. And now AJ going in once again, side headlock. Has Natalia locked for a suplex, up over and down to the mat. Big time vertical suplex from AJ Lee. And now AJ picks Natalia up. And AJ spinning around again, has the Black Widow lock applied. That is AJ Lee's finishing maneuver. Natalia's gonna have to tap here, but again, AJ Lee. Can't bring it home on that. Not enough damage done beforehand. AJ from behind. There's a hip toss from Natalia, the much larger opponent here. AJ twisting the arm. Natalia with a big knee to the gut. And a huge running clothesline. Just the way we open the match. Could be the way we end it. Big knee to the forehead while AJ is down from Natalia. 
And now Natalia lifting AJ Lee to her feet and has her high overhead. Big time power slam from Natalia to AJ, sending her back first to the mat. And now she's got the butterfly lock applied. And AJ near the ropes is going to have to tap out if she can't do something here, ladies and gentlemen. Natalia's got that cinched in. But AJ does indeed wiggle her way out and escape. And now Natalia from behind. There is a huge twisting back suplex planting AJ on the mat. And now AJ is just completely out of this. Natalia's spinning clothesline sends AJ down to the mat. She is doomed right here. And Natalia rolls her over. And she's got the camel clutch applied. And AJ's got to get to the ropes. But AJ Lee can't get to the ropes. And she taps out. Natalia, the number one contender, beats the Divas champion in a non-title match. She finally gets her hands on AJ Lee. And she proves to the entire WWE Universe why she was so angry about not getting a title match at Extreme Rules. This was not a title match, though. This only grants Natalia pride. We have no idea what this is going to lead to, but what we do know is that Natalia survived two Black Widows from AJ Lee. She survived her knee being assaulted on those steel stairs. I don't want to see a replay of that. And she came back and she won with a submission in the ring after knocking AJ Lee out with a spinning clothesline there. Unbelievable. And you've got to think, if there was ever proof that the Divas title should be on the line at over the limit. It just occurred in this match right here. And there is Natalia super fired up after the match. She's got pointing to the sky. She's got the crowd behind her. They are loving it. They don't like AJ Lee anymore. We're going to come right back for our main event, guys. Ricky the Dragon Steamboat taking on Razor Ramon. Falls count anywhere. Don't you go anywhere. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen, main event time from the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Falls count anywhere between Razor Ramon and Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Ramon from behind, but the Dragon reverses into a snapmare. Neither of these men has had much TV exposure in this universe mode so far. So to be main eventing SmackDown here this first week in May 2K14, it's got to feel great for both of them. We want to see what they put on here for a main event in a Falls Count Anywhere match. There's a reason it was booked. And there's a big DDT from Razor Ramon to Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. And now side headlock applied. Ramon from behind, but Steamboat twisting the arm. Big time belly to belly side slam, sending Razor Ramon down to the mat back first. Working on his own headlock. And there's a big jumping headbutt from Ricky the Dragon to Razor Ramon here. Ricky working from behind, big time belly to back suplex, and Steamboat climbs off. And now heading outside of the ring is Steamboat. He's reaching under the ring for a weapon of some sort, and it looks like he's coming up with a steel chair there. But he gets laid out by a double axe handle from Razor, and now Razor Ramon using the chair into the body and the legs of Steamboat. Four chair shots, and the chair is already shattered. And there's a stomp to the man parts of Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. The ref has made his way out of the ring. Steamboat now getting choked out. And Razor Ramon is just vicious in this match right now. Runs at him. Big bulldog into the floor of the arena. But now Dragon pushes him off. And there's a power slam from Razor Ramon. Sending him down to the floor once again. And now on the apron. Misses the flying punch. Does Razor Ramon. But working from behind on Steamboat. Big back suplex there. And Steamboat is down and running at him. Steamboat with an arm drag, sending Razor Ramon onto the entrance ramp, but he kicks out of the pinfall there. So the ref is outside to count with both of these men. And now working from behind is Steamboat, but he gets his dropkick swapped away by Razor Ramon. Steamboat reversing into a big-time back suplex square on the entrance ramp. There's a two count from the ref, but Razor does indeed kick out. Stands up right into a drop kick from Ricky the Dragon Steamboat, the martial arts expert. And now from a side headlock, Steamboat is going to whip Razor right into those steel stairs, flipping him over. Great hot camera angle there, catching the impact of it all. And now Razor gets up, and he's got a front headlock applied, and he's got the Dragon up. Into a vertical suplex onto the steel stairs. Oh my god. Look at the pain that Ricky the Dragon Steamboat was in there, ladies and gentlemen. Looked like Natalia in that match we just had against AJ Lee. Weapon versus weapon here. And now Razor with another chair right to the face of the Dragon here. And he's just raining chair shots down on Ricky Steamboat. 
but Steamboat gets up and hits a running clothesline, sending Razor down one. Just that one count, though, and Razor does indeed kick out. There's a big chop from the Dragon, but Razor Ramon now blocks a punch. Steamboat from behind on Razor Ramon. He's got a sleeper applied, and the ref doesn't know where to go to get a better vantage at it. But there's a modified stunner from Razor Ramon to Ricky Steamboat. And now Razor is just daring him to get up. We're on the outside here. What is this going to be? Wait, Razor's got him set up for a power bomb. This can't be it. He's got him up over his shoulder. It's going to be the Razor's edge. And he's got him down right next to the steel stairs. And now Razor going for a pin after the Razor's edge of the floor. One, two, three. Ladies and gentlemen, that is your match. Nobody kicks out of the Razor's Edge. Razor Ramon hits it on the outside, sending Ricky the Dragon Steamboat to the floor of the arena here in the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Looked like Steamboat was making a comeback after that sleeper and sending Razor Ramon into the steel stairs. But two broken chairs later and a, a Razor's Edge to the floor of the arena. Razor Ramon comes out on top in a huge main event victory over Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. Here's that Razor's Edge one more time. Trying to line it up onto the steel stairs, but I guess it's a good thing he couldn't quite get it. May have actually killed the Dragon here, ladies and gentlemen. And that's how we are going to go off the air from SmackDown here. Razor Ramon gets a huge main event victory over Ricky the Dragon Steamboat. The crowd loves the action. We had quite a night here, ladies and gentlemen. Stone Cold losing to Andre the Giant just barely despite two stunners. Natalia beating the Divas Champion one-on-one -on -one in a submission match. We had the NWO using mental cues to beat DX. And we had Dusty Rhodes winning over Darren Young in his singles debut in this universe mode. We're going to go off the air here from the United Center in Chicago, Illinois. Ladies and gentlemen, we will see you next Friday for SmackDown. And we'll be back soon for IWC. All right, guys. We are back here from our little YouTube office just for a, a quick end to the SmackDown show here. Normally, this is where we would do IWC and simulate through and show you who wins what and all that stuff. But we're going to be doing things a little bit differently from here on. Uh, Mr. Respawn, one of my subscribers, had a really cool idea. I was initially afraid of doing it for time purposes, but it seems that there's enough interest out there, especially since I'm using so many of your created wrestlers that you want to see them every once in a while. We're going to start running IWC as we do the um, Superstar show. And what I want to do in is... Um, We'll, we'll, we'll leave it to a viewer vote as we do. We'll run down the card. We'll say this is, you know, whatever matches you guys want. By the time I'm ready to play through IWC, which will be a few days from the time that you see this, most likely. I'll, I'll let you know on Twitter, though. Make sure you're following me, twitter.com slash Roush Games. Um, you'll, you'll be able to vote, and whoever wins is the one match that we will play on IWC. And instead of just playing that one match and doing nothing else, I am also going to have... I think maybe just one cutscene per week, just because I still want this to be like a short show. I don't want to spend so much time working on it, but um, I think the the, the cutscenes are going to come from NXT, so we have a chance to show you the stories there. I'm not even going to try to make up stories for the indies, because there are just so many people down there. But um, we'll have people from NXT, like we'll have The Miz and Zack Ryder talking about the title shot, or we'll have like The Roush and Heath Slater going back and forth, or whatever, you know, whatever rivalry I feel needs to be spoken about. So I'm going to start it off by doing it. This week, this will be the first time. We're going to run down the card in just a few minutes. I'll show you what your choices are. I'll also post them on Reddit um, as soon as this video goes up so you can be able to vote in case you know you need to see them there or whatever. Um, and I will start getting story together. I'm going to start out by doing just one cutscene, one story mode from NXT to save time and to make sure we don't fall behind on this universe mode because it already takes us long enough to get through a calendar month. I want, to go I want you guys to see pay-per-views once in a while, so... I'm going to try not to make it any longer than it is, but if this is something you want, I'm willing to try it out. So, for this one, there will be one cutscene, and your match card is, first off, right here, you've got two members of the Swarm. They are tag team partners. They are from the same trio, but they're going to lead off the show in a one-on-one -on -one match, a Sail Ant versus Combat Ant. The second match, number one contenders match for the Independent Wrestling Community Tag Team Championships. You're going to have... The Devastation Corporation, represented by Blaster McMassive and Max Smash Ma I can never say his name on camera. Max Smashmaster. They will be taking on Fist, F-I-S-T, Chuck Taylor, and Icarus. We have a one-on-one -on -one match between Corey Graves and Jay Briscoe. We have a one-on-one -on -one match 
between Adrian Neville and Orbit Adventure Ant. And in the main event of the IWC, we're going to have your IWC champion, Cassius Ono or Chris Hero, whatever you want, taking on Troy. One-on-one -on -one match, non-title. But that Troy there is someone, I mean, most these are all created wrestlers. But, and, and all the Chikara guys, essentially, are coming from Cray Fufu. -Fu, so, I mean, you know, he's going to see himself represented all over the show. But Troy is a created wrestler created by my buddy over at Next Level Games 360. So, he may be very interested in voting to see that match and see his call in action on my show. But either way, those are your choices. Get voting. Get the votes in as quick as you can. I'm going to play this pretty soon, guys. And we'll have that one cutscene from NXT attached to it. We'll see how it works out. And I expect you guys in the comments to let me know whether or not you like it, whether you don't want it, whether you want to change anything about it, keep doing that. And as per usual, if you like this video, this big SmackDown video, leave a like on it and leave that like so hard that I can feel it here in my home in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And if you're new here and you're just kind of coming by and this is your first time here, why don't you consider subscribing, guys? I'm going to have regular universe mode content like this as well as other fun games. Check it out. Check out the whole catalog. If you like it, stick around for a while. We'll do a lot of cool stuff together. But I am going to go get on with my day. I hope you guys have a wonderful one, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye. Uh.